All right, guys, what is going on? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for clicking on the video this week. If you follow along last week, you know we started our John Boat build series. This is an old 1970 something John Boat. I attempted to learn how to aluminum weld. That turned out pretty good. I mean, I still need a lot of practice. If you didn't see that video, be sure to go check it out. And this week, we're gonna start adding the wood. We're gonna start making templates today, cutting a bunch of three quarter inch marine grade plywood. We're gonna be carpeting it. We're gonna be adding new seats. I don't know how far we'll get in this week's video, but we are gonna be starting the templates and the woodwork, try to get everything dry fit so that we can begin the carpet, the seats, and then we can move on to the paint and stuff later on. I wanna start with the back of the boat. I wanna make templates. Thank goodness we picked up a new TV from Sam's Club about two weeks ago. So I've got a ton of cardboard. I saved the box that it came in and now I've got a bunch of template material that we can use hopefully to make one big template for the back. We're gonna make templates for the front deck that we're gonna be building and get started on it. We are gonna be sponsored in this video by BassBoatSeats.com. That's why I kind of got this set up here. When I do these boat builds, you guys know that I've always got my seats, my carpet, my glue, anything you need when you're repairing a boat or rebuilding a boat from BassBoatSeats.com. They sent out a couple of really nice real tree camouflage seats for this boat. We got our wood glue. Just remember when you are doing carpet, their glue works with wood. If you're putting carpet on top of a metal, aluminum, uh, fiberglass, anything like that, you wanna use a completely different glue. This, this glue right here is only designed to go in between carpet and wood. It's, it's gotta soak into the wood. But anyway, we got the glue from them and we've got a whole roll of carpet. So we've got enough to make this boat look good. I just got a lot of work ahead of me. I wanna start making these templates and stuff today so we can move on to adding this cool stuff like these seats. I'm gonna have these linked below if you're interested in these seats. They've got a few different designs for the camo line that they have of different seats. These are the Realtree Max 5, and they look really, really good. I can't wait to see how they look in the boat. We are gonna be replacing these old plastic bucket seats from the 70s out with this, so it should be nice. These look super comfortable. All the seats I've ever gotten from them have been super comfortable. I mean, if you follow along, you know my Nitro's got some brand new seats in it from them. We just overhauled that boat and they're made exactly like this, so I know these are gonna be comfortable too. So if you're interested in restoring a boat, I should have links, maybe some coupon codes for BassBoatSeats.com in the video description. Be sure to hop down there and get you some of these seats, carpet, glue. Go check out their website. They got all kind of cool stuff, accessories and stuff if you're repairing or restoring a bass boat or an old John boat like this. I'm gonna be filming a little bit different today because it's super hot outside. It's gonna be mid 90s. So I'm gonna be running a loud AC all day. We're gonna be running a shop vac and a saw. So I may film it a little bit different. We may do some templates while I can talk to you. And then I'm gonna kick everything on and kind of speed lapse it and, and try to get the cuts done with an AC going because I don't wanna burn up in here just trying to cut some lumber for this boat today. Let's get to work. All right, here's a piece of the cardboard from that TV box. Uh, it's funny, we got that TV a couple weeks ago and we didn't even go there to get a TV. We went there to just we were just in town and we just stopped in Sam's Club to look around and they had it on clearance marked down pretty low for what it was. And we ended up leaving. That's why I didn't have a trailer with me and I ended up strapping it on top of my Diamondback. We looked like the Clampets coming home with that big old TV on the back of the truck, but it made it home and we got some stencil material. I need to set it right there. I got should have more than enough to be able to stencil out the deck and this transom and the floor. I may not have to stencil the floor, we're definitely gonna have to stencil this in the front deck though, but here is the transom area. Hopefully y'all can see really good. And look what came in the mail. If y'all watched last week's video, I told you I found some aluminum handles for the boat to replace, you know, they were missing one back here and found them on Amazon and they finally got here and they come not drilled so that we can make sure that our holes line up and drill the holes exactly how we want them. Now we got one extra handle when we get done. Let me get these out of the way. And we hadn't mounted this yet either. I still gotta pick up some mushroom head bolts. So when we get to the bottom of the floor and start adding that, we can get the brace put on. But for now, we're gonna make us a template for this back transom back here. I'm gonna build this transom a little bit different than how it was when we removed it. The board was just a, a big rectangle. I think I'm gonna try to match the 
shape of the back back here. In doing that, I probably won't be able to fill up the whole area because it's still got to be able to slide down in here and then slide up. So it's going to have to still be a little bit smaller than this back wall to make it fit, especially up under these braces. So let me, I'm going to measure the biggest area that I can and we'll just start trimming the cardboard down until we get a nice tight fit. Anyway, let's get to work on this. All right, template number one. Let's see if it fits. Aha, just as I expected. It will have to be trimmed unless we can go in like this. But you also gotta keep in mind this is not three quarter inches thick. I trimmed about a half inch off the, the skinnier side there. Now let's see if it's gonna fall in. All right, it falls in. Now when we pull it up, we should be able to center it up. Now it's not gonna match it perfectly, but I think that's better than a big rectangle back here. What do y'all think? And then we'll be able to tuck it up in there. And then once the handle bolts go in, they go in back here. There's another bolt down here. That should pull it really tight against the wall there. And that is why I made a template because if I'd have cut it out of wood, we'd still be over there trimming off the bottom down there. And I do believe now it's gonna be a tight fit with that three quarter inch, sliding it in here like that. But we should be able to slide it in, pop it in place and then slide it up. All right, guys, all the wood is cut. It's dropped into place. It's obviously not bolted down yet because we're gonna carpet each panel and put it into place. I did end up having to make another run to Lowe's yesterday to get two more sheets of plywood so that I'm trying to do this as in big of pieces as possible that I can get away with. So we're ended up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces, nine if you include the transom, but it's fully installed now. It's gonna be painted in place to match the boat. All of this is gonna be carpeted. I did end up making me a deck, and I don't know if I filmed it or not, but I did use some of the aluminum. Hopefully y'all can see that. I'll walk you around in just a minute and show you, but this aluminum brace here, it was just scraps that was in this boat when we disassembled it. 
and I, I put it across there so we have a nice brace right here in this deck. So when I start bolting this deck down, it'll give us more support up there and a good place to kind of pull it down because this front deck is gonna end up being slightly curved. Hopefully this wood will work with me and help me curve it to, to match the contour of the front. I also went to Lowe's to pick up the closed cell foam that you put up under these plat platforms and these decks. And you do that in John Boat, so if it ever does take on water, it won't sink all the way. It'll keep it from sinking. They didn't have the size that I need. I need an inch and a half thick, even though the website said they had it in stock, they didn't. So what I'm gonna do in order to keep the video going is I'm gonna build this thing out and then when they get the foam in stock later, I'll just pop the panels out and replace them because it's not that hard and that's kind of why I'm making these panels easily to remove. You know, I'm not gonna carpet it in place like this because then you'd have to rip up carpet just to get the panels out. We're gonna carpet each one of these panels here in just a minute and start popping them in place. Before we start laying carpet in this thing, I'll show you what it looks like with just the wood. It makes it look a lot bigger. It's starting to look like a boat again, ain't it? <laughs> but look how big this deck is. And I thought about putting a hinge up here and making this so you could open it, but I ended up just settling on hard bolting it down once it's locked down. And I put an opening here so we could store life jackets, throw cushions or whatever. And also I might end up putting a recessed foot pedal up in here for the trolling motor. And it's, the trolling motor's gotta be bolted here anyway. So making it tilt was just gonna be more complicated than what it's worth actually. And we got just as much access to the storage using this. And I'll be able to reach in here to put nuts and bolts and stuff when we start mounting hardware. The side walls are pretty nice. The floor looks extremely open. We're gonna have the one pedestal here and then another pedestal right in here with plenty of room. The back transom turned out pretty good. It's actually completely bolted up in place. I even got the brace put in. I've got the Marine 5200 sealant on all of the bolts. Got the new handles on back here. That's what that white is you see, that's the, that 5200. It should be sealed up really good. Once everything's done and we get the inside of this thing finished, we start painting, I'll come back here and we'll clean up all of this sealing up really good and do a good base coat over top of all of it. So I ended up going with the gunmetal gray for this boat. I was gonna do tan. I've done tan on the nitro and I've done tan when we did the Skeeter build last year or maybe it was year before last and I think tan would have looked good, especially with the camo seats and the camo that we're going with. But remember, I do wanna be able to hunt out of this boat. And there's gonna be a lot of times where we're climbing in and out of this boat on a muddy bank and stuff like that. And tracking mud in and out of this boat is gonna happen way more often than it would like in my bass boat. So I went with a gray. The gray should look fine with the camo that we're gonna be going with. It's a good neutral color. And I went with a 20 ounce because we're gonna be folding it, folding it over the panels, stapling the back. And you really don't wanna do anything bigger than a 20 ounce, if you're, especially if you're gonna be budding you know, panels together. The 24 ounce is just too thick to do that. It'll, it'll cause your gaps to not fit right. And then before you know it, you've got panels and lids and stuff that are just too tight in the boat. So 20 ounce is what we went with. I bought 16 feet of this. It's a 15 foot boat. Gonna be cutting it close just a little bit. But since it's eight foot wide, I'm only gonna be able to, I mean, I'm only gonna have to use a, a portion of it over here. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to use a lot more of the panel on this side. We just gotta keep in mind that you want the grain of the carpet always running the same direction. So we're gonna lay it out and I might even bring each panel and go ahead and set them out on this carpet. Trace around the edges about two inches, leaving me enough to fold over and staple. Then we're gonna glue the top, hopefully, Everything fits on top of this and we can keep all of the grain going the same direction. All right, we actually got way more carpet than I thought we needed. Uh, eight by 16 is plenty. We're gonna have plenty left over, plenty of room to play with, lots of wiggle room as you can see. And I'm not gonna cut them in place like they are. You know, that'd be pretty wasteful. As I cut, I'll start with the front deck right here. As I cut it, I'll shift each piece closer to it to try to maximize the amount of carpet we have left over so we don't waste any. And that way, if I do have some sections left over, 
Later on, if I want to add something cool, you know, to it, we've got the carpet here that perfectly matches what we're putting in today. This is the perfect amount, I think. So now I'm just going to start up here at the front deck, cutting, gluing, and stapling. And I got this guy. I've always done it with like a manual stapler or an air stapler. This I found at Harbor Freight a few months ago. It's an electric staple gun, and man, it has been working great. I've been using this thing all over the place here at the house. But I'm gonna fold the carpet over once the glue is on this side and staple it from the other side. You did see me when I cut these out, I routed all of the edges so the carpet should go over nice and smooth. It should look good when we're done. Now I'm just gonna get back to work. All right, trying to get this whole boat in frame is gonna be near impossible. I'm gonna take you guys off the tripod here in just a minute, walk you through and show you the final results of the last five days of me out here building this platform and carpeting all these little panels that we got built. I got them installed. As you can tell, it does look different. I did make an executive decision and go ahead and paint the top of this. Uh, the whole boat's not gonna be black, but I didn't want the camo flowing over uh, next to the gray carpet. I, I wanted it black so that it, I think black against the gray carpet looks really good. We're still going to camo the sides of the boat to match the seats and I think it'll be a nice balance and, and it'll look a whole lot better than just running the camo straight over the sides of the carpet and it was a whole lot easier to do. Plus I got to use up some bed liner that I had from the trailer swift build. I had a whole bunch of bed liner left over. All of this is black bed liner it's gonna be durable, it's gonna be nice up here, I think, and it looks really good. The black hides all the little dings and nicks and stuff that are on this boat from it being so old, and it, it matches with this gray really good. We're still gonna be painting these pedestals camo whenever we do the sides. None of this is bolted down, by the way. I just kinda mocked it up to show you. The panels are bolted down. The, pa the carpet is done. We're, this is it for the carpet. I may add a few extra little things whenever we mount the trolling motor. I might build me a little carpeted platform up here with a flat spot for our trolling motor to go. I had the idea to maybe use the XI3 on this as well as my Hobie. If I do, all I'd have to do is get another quick disconnect from catch, mount one here, and then I can literally just swap this XI3 from boat to boat. But I do have that trolling motor that came with this boat that I may incorporate. I haven't made up my mind on that yet. But everything's installed. We're gonna move on to the wiring and the camo within the next two or three weeks. And then we're gonna 
put this thing in the water and see how fast that NT300 will go. And I'm gonna be adding stuff along the way too. I got a lot of Yak Attack products that I wanna implement in this boat. We're gonna do some built-in LED lights, some running lights, maybe even some really cool lights on the inside. I can take advantage of some of these little panels and stuff that you know are part of this boat that we can add stuff to and make it look kind of cool. But let me grab the camera really quick. I wanna walk you through, give you up close shot of it. I think it turned out good to be, you know, three or four days out here in my garage crawling around in the floor. The lighting in here is not great, but look how big this casting platform turned out to be. I'm really glad that I ended up doing that and I got the carpet in the front deck to flow. It's a nice flush line all the way around. We got plenty of room to put our trolling motor off to the side that we got a place to stand up here and fish and then we can hop down here. I'm not gonna put a pedestal or a seat or anything up there. That's gonna be for standing and, and fishing off of. When we're riding down the river, we can just plop down here and sit in the seat. The little cubby hole turned out great. Those wires are just coming from the trolling motor. I just got them kind of thrown in there out of the way. The carpet turned out fantastic. All the way back through here. Check out the back transom area. The reason I stopped here and I didn't deck it all the way to the back is because you, you wanna be able to get to your plug for one thing, but I'm also gonna be putting a bilge pump in the floor back here that's gonna have a tube that goes over the side. I'm gonna rewire our lights back here. I'm gonna put some interior lights in, some battery boxes back here for the, the Newport Vessels NT300. That thing will be linked in the video description. Y'all need to check that out. If you're gonna build a John boat and you don't wanna deal with a gas motor, that's gonna be the way to go. I can't wait to see how fast it pushes this boat. But, but I'll be pulling these pedestals out within the next couple of days, getting them painted up, and then we're gonna start painting the sides, pulling and running wires. I think I'm gonna do some flush mount navigation lights in the side. And the black doesn't look too bad. Let me see if I can give you guys a side view. You can tell the boat's still stained up pretty bad, but if, just imagine the whole boat right here, camo, and then those pedestals camo. Black would also look really good too, wouldn't it, on those pedestals? I think I'm gonna do camo just to match the sides. I think it'll look a little bit more custom if we do, but I'm happy with it. So what do you guys think about this build so far? Are you liking it or you don't like it? Would you rather me be working on the Bonafide right now? Let me know in the comments. Also, let me know if there's anything you'd like to see me add to this boat that I'm just missing out on. Just hit me up in the comments and let me know. We're not going to stretch this build series out like 10 videos, but we are going to do two or three more where we do the paint job and then we're going to probably do the trailer, wire this thing up and take it out. The wiring and taking it out might be all one video and we'll just test it out and do some fishing out of it and then we'll move on to the next project. I'm still getting stuff in for that Bonafide and I got a... I got some wood coming for the project. I wasn't gonna do it. Not matter of fact, I didn't even think about it, but last week at the beginning of the video, what the John Boat second video of the John Boat build, I showed you guys my new archery range that I've been building out in my backyard. And two or three of you guys suggested a two-story shooting spot, like where I shoot from at all the targets. Right now it's just a, a one-level platform, but a lot of you guys, commented and talked about adding a, a second story so that it'd be like shooting from a tree stand and then shooting from the ground on the bottom story. So I got some lumber coming for a different project, but I think that I might have enough to make that happen. We might build a two story thing out there. If that's something you wanna see, let me know in the comments. Hit thumbs up on these videos. It really helps me out. It helps share it around YouTube and it puts me more in the algorithm so my channel gets a little bit more views and I can do more stuff like this. If you wanna become a member, make sure you guys hit that join button. You support the channel, it's five bucks a month and it really helps me make more content like this. Right now, between me and you, I'm in the transition of going full-time on YouTube. I still work a regular job as of right now. I've been there for like 15 years, but I think it's time for me to kind of move into this, but I I'm scared to death to do it. So help me out by sharing my videos, watching my videos, liking my videos. It really helps boost my channel and, and it gives me the drive to to kind of make the transition and do this full time. I think it'll be really cool, but that is gonna do it for this week's video, guys. I appreciate you watching every week. Those of you guys that are supporting me by being here every Monday at six o'clock and clicking on the video, I really, really appreciate it. If you want some Kayak USA merch, you can hit that Shop Kayak USA button in the video description and go there and follow along with these builds, support the channel, and I'll catch you guys next Monday at six o'clock. Peace.